right welcome back everyone it is me nina and i have got leon with me again today so we were chatting about meal prep sunday veganmealprepsunday.com is your blog your website where you've got the most beautiful beautiful images and pictures um and there are lots of recipes in there <laughs> i do love it and i know you do spend a lot of time and energy in um having created those you take a lot of pride in it and it and one can see so um i absolutely love that so what i wanted to chat about a little now on this one was like what are the challenges maybe that you face that you've known other people who face with regards to meal prepping because I get a lot of people saying like oh I just can't do it it's just not for me um so what have you heard what are the challenges you've you've come across and um then afterwards we can maybe chat about like why it's quite a good idea to maybe overcome those challenges and do some meal prepping Yeah, so there's actually so many challenges that meal prep can help you overcome, um, you know, and um, okay, so I'll name a few that I can think of um, immediately. The one is, for example, time. A lot of people feel that they don't have enough time to regularly cook proper, balanced and healthy meals. Um, you know, several times a day, in course, you know, because at the end of the day, we eat three times a day and we underestimate how much time goes into preparing a real, you know, balanced and healthy meal. So time is, is a big thing. Then also people don't always have the energy on a daily basis to to put a meal together because at the end of the day, you know, it's a lot of work um, to chop and cook you know do all the things that come with establishing a meal and now i'm not talking about per se like making a sandwich so something like that is fast but if you want to eat like three meals a day that have some protein that have some healthy starches that have some veggies you know eat enough fruit fruit for example has always been a huge challenge for myself like i just don't get around to it if i don't prep for it you know um, so yeah, time and effort, I would say are two really big ones. Then, um, another challenge that people face is that they just struggle to eat healthy, to eat nutritious food. Um, and I think that's a huge thing that meal prep can help with. Um, also meal variety, like people tend to eat a lot of the same food if they, um, don't prepare in advance for what they are going to eat. Um, then another challenge is some money. A lot of people feel that it's too expensive to eat healthy. And I really think that if you don't prepare properly for, you know, eating healthy food throughout the week, then it can get extremely expensive, especially if you're going to get like healthy takeout lunches and stuff. Um, they are just exorbitantly expensive and it's really not necessary. Like you don't need to spend that much money to eat healthy food. Then I think a lot of people also face the challenge of food waste. Um, you know, they'll go to the grocery store and buy a lot of vegetables, a lot of uh, fruit, and they just like once the week happens and things are busy, they just don't get around to preparing it. And then it just goes to waste and then they feel sad about it. And then they just get into the habit of like not even buying it at all because they're like, oh, if I buy all this healthy food, I never end up making it. So let's not waste my time on it, you know. Um, and then I think the a last one is that um, people find it like stressful to have to think about what they're going to eat several times a day you know when you're already in a busy day and you then on top of that also have to think oh, what am I going to eat now <laughs> you know if you haven't pre-planned things that can just feel like an added stressor that's not that's actually not necessary you know that you can take that away out of your daily routine if you just meal prep and think ahead of what it is that you that you are going to eat yeah I mean those are a lot of challenge challenges and <laughs> the, the the main one I think for a lot of people is this idea of time like I think they think yes. meal prepping True. will take a lot of time um, and it's just not worth the time and the effort and actually if you 
work it out by the amount of time that you actually spend when you actually do do the meal prepping and how much time you save during the week thereafter and not just time with actually like you were saying about like prepping and cooking but actually the idea of like decision fatigue I don't know how many times like women have like joined some of my courses or whatnot and they like the biggest issue that they have is like oh what am I going to cook tonight and I was like well why don't you just have a meal plan in place then you know exactly what's happening every day you can always shift and change but at least then you don't have that decision fatigue that kicks in about like what is Wednesday going to be you know what am I going to be doing today um, so I think the the aspect that you bring up of time is so, so vitally important nowadays because everyone, everyone who I speak to doesn't have time. <laughs> no one has time for anything. Yes. And it's really, really sad. It's extremely um, sad. Yes. Um, and, yes. and I think it's what I'm noticing. It's like more people think they don't have time and it's more that they don't have time in their head because they're so exhausted with all the decisions they're busy processing in their head but not actually just taking action and doing something that's going to save a lot of time. All right. So, okay. We've, we've, you've covered a lot of the challenges. So let's just go through like how meal prepping can really benefit. So let's look at like the positives of that, like the, the, the opposites of those. Um, And let's start with time because we've been there and we've just, I mean, I've just addressed that a little, but maybe you can just continue and say what else you find um, coming up. Oh, okay. When it comes to time, sorry. Mm, mm. okay and and the way you get the other benefits as well okay so the the way in which i see the challenge of time and how meal prep can help with that is that you know when you batch cook when you know meal prep is essentially batch cooking so you cook a lot of food in one set in one sitting Um, And, you know, okay, it takes a little bit more time in that moment to cook a large amount of food opposed to a small amount of food. But, you know, your saving of time throughout the week as a consequence of that larger time investment over the weekend or whenever you have, you know, extra time available is just enormous. The saving is enormous throughout the week. Like, let's say you can easily... an amount of two hours over a weekend, you can easily make like six to 12 meals maybe. Well, if you were to prepare all those meals separately, it would just take you so much more time. So, you know, the batch cooking aspect of meal prep is what saves you a lot of time. Then on top of that, there's not only the time that you save when it comes to batch cooking, there's also the time that you save when it comes to cleanup because now, Um, oh I love that one yes (laughs) now you only have to like clean up your kitchen really you know okay you make a big mess in one go and then you clean it all up and then your kitchen can literally remain clean and almost (laughs) unused finally enough for like the next few days thing but it's such a big one like I hadn't even thought about it and it makes so much sense so much sense it's really it's it's so active because you know in our house if we don't meal prep um you know when we have not when we don't have um meals prepped and we just have like a normal day of making food at the end of the day the kitchen is literally like a disaster like you know for just like cooking some pasta you'll need a pot for making some sauce you need a pot well if you have like just prepped a whole you know big pot of sauce in advance you know that takes like 10 times of needing one little pot away out of your life you know throughout the week so it's really amazing the amount of time that you can save when it comes to cleaning up when you meal prep especially you know like you can if you literally just like cook a little little something for one person you always need at least like two pots two pots spoon you're going to have a chopping board yes. something to chop and yes yeah no I hear that um I'm- and with two pots you can literally make like 20 meals actually if you're just organized enough to make it happen you know 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of like what then comes into play as well is this idea of like cost and money saving, because then you're not just buying small things or you're not maybe buying like the pre-cut um, butternut. If you're making butternut super, you can like buy a big one or you can buy a big bag or whatever the story is. But that's actually when the, the cost saving comes in because you're not buying a ready-made bag from Pick and Pay or Woolies. You're actually, you know, going through the process. You're throwing your onions in, you're putting in, you know, all of it and that's probably where a lot of the cost saving comes in as well because you're not paying for all this added packaging and prep that's gone yes. by someone else definitely yes because you know like if you'll make like just a meal for one person or two people you feel that it's worth it to just buy that pre-chopped butternut you know like my sister for example she always or she cooks a lot just for herself and then she just like loves to already buy like the potatoes that are like peeled and washed and ready in the bag at the moment um but when you're actually cooking like a big portion of food then it feels like a waste to buy those small little packets because you're like i'll um buy a big bag of potatoes and it's worth it to just go through peeling them preparing them because you're gonna be making a big batch of food so it just makes it worth it and you save a lot because you know when you buy things in bulk it's always much cheaper than if you buy things in more individual sized portions and um yeah and the thing is at the end of the day that you will definitely waste less stuff because I was at the end of the day that I was just gonna say your food waste must be so much less if you're actually cooking and, and and that's also a money saving you know if you have less food waste you also save money because you know how many times do you buy those little bags of potatoes and then you end up making other plans and you don't end up preparing them and then they go off really quickly because you know they're they're um They've been pre-peeled they very yeah. quickly, yeah, because they're already like cut and everything or peeled and everything. So, you know, their lifespan is a little bit shorter. And then you end up just like you bought the expensive ones in individual portions. And then you you happen to sometimes just throw them away, which is wasting money twice, really. Um, so, yeah, for sure, like it's it's not even just like meal prepping in and of itself that helps you save money. It's like the principle of cooking bigger batches of food that is helping you save money and you reduce the waste, you know? Yeah. And that's a big thing. And I know kind of like in Ayurveda, they often say like, you know, you, the most ideal is to cook fresh food every day because yes. you can have the most nutrient dense, this, that, and the next. Mm. And I get that and I understand that. And I'm like, yes, if we're in an ideal world yeah. and we have yes. time in the world, then fantastic, then great. And if mm. you're on holiday and you've got time to spare and you can do that, great. But for most people who maybe have like a nine to five or who have got, a, you know, a couple of kids running around that they've got to take, you know, to school here, or there and everywhere. Yeah. It's just not efficient. It's just it's just not practical for them to operate yes. that way. So there's nothing wrong. I mean, I, I do it like with Craig. He's he's a he's a meat eater. So like, for example, if I make oxtail stew, I'll make a big pot of oxtail. And then that goes into into the freezer so that if we have other farmers come over, <laughs> then <laughs> there's something that is ready and easily accessible and um and and done. And it's healthy. And I know that it's, you know, I know where the meats come from and the veg have been, you know, I know where they've come from. They've been peeled, they're all in there. Um, and it's better having something like that than getting like a store bought, I don't know, crumb chicken and throwing that together with some yeah ready packet yes. old potatoes that have been sitting in the in the shop for a week or so already <laughs> yeah because you know the reality is for people that are really busy at the end of the day um what is going to happen is lunchtime is going to come around and for these type of people it will be either having something that is meal prepped you know that was made in advance or it will be like a peanut butter sandwich. And then what is more nutritious? I would think something that was prepared in advance. And if the, if those are your only two options, 
then I think it's easy to know what is which one to choose exactly and the same kind of like goes with um I know there's a big you know like smoothies and juices and things like that and yes you know if you can do your fresh juice you know you're going to get so many more nutrients you know right away but you know, if you make, if you do it in batch and you keep it in the fridge and you have it for the next three days or for the week, by having it, you're going to get more nutrients in than by not having it. And the chances that exactly. you can get those nutrients by not taking in is so much less than thinking that it needs to be perfect. And I think we all need to step away from like exactly. things needing to be perfect or the ideal way and actually just make it more practical and accessible to where we all are at the moment. Um, mm. So I love, I love um, how you brought up kind of like the challenges and the benefits of, of how meal prep can be, can be so helpful. Yeah. And I think also another thing is that the misconception often with meal prep is that now you are restricted to like having to eat only these meals and you have no flexibility, but the reality is that actually you can work around, like you can plan your meal prep in such a way that there is still room for flexibility at the end of the day you know when there is an evening where your friends last minute want to go out for dinner it's not a problem you can still do those things it's not because you meal prep that you can't do those things anymore like one way that I try to um you know plan my meals is I tend to like meal prep on a Sunday enough food for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then I know all that food actually remains fresh for at least four days. So I can easily like skip a dinner, skip a lunch, skip a breakfast, and I can still eat it before it goes off. You know, you can really work in such a way that you don't take away your flexibility. You know, you need to make it work for you at the end of the day and not just, you know, make it restrictive for you. Oh, I love, I love, love, love how you say that. Um, and, and I think that's a big thing because people often think, oh, if there's a plan in place, it's just restrictive and it's going to tighten me in. And actually it's a complete opposite. Like when you've got a little bit of plan in place, you're releasing that decision fatigue because you know that there's something there, but it's also giving you the flexibility to do something else or to you know, maybe you go out with a friend one evening, but maybe you invite a friend over for lunch or something the next evening, and you already have a double meal ready and waiting. So you can really play with it anyway and 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 really not be, like you're saying, like so restrictive. It actually gives you more flexibility. Um so so yeah. Yeah. That's cool. so, that's how I see it at least. <laughs> no, I so I'm so with you on that one. So Again, Lian, thank you so much for chatting and we'll do one more of these if you've still got time because I'd love to hear like exactly like how you actually get into it. So thank you, thank you. Thank you.